Good evening. This is CTV News for Thursday, July 26th. I'm Byron Scott. And I'm Denise Douglas. Thank you for joining us this evening. Well, today is the deadline for the government to reunite hundreds of parents and children separated at the border, but it is very unlikely that that will happen. Part of the problem is that many parents have been deported, according to government lawyers. Advocates working with immigrants say that the efforts have been chaotic. Yesterday, dozens of people rallied in Baltimore outside the ICE field office, demanding that the government speed up the process. So we're here demanding that he not only say that he's going to reunite families, but that he does it. We're here with community members who are directly affected, community members who know what it feels like to be separated from their family members, um, demanding that he does this as soon as possible. As of Monday, officials said they had brought together 879 parents and children and identified 1,634 parents who are possibly eligible for reunification. A health advocacy group says it is not giving up the fight to lower prescription drug prices, even after a federal appeals court deals another setback to a state law. The measure, which passed in 2017, would have limited price spikes for generic drugs by giving the attorney general authority to review pricing information. A trade industry group challenged the law with the Commerce Clause and won in court. The Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals denied the state's request for a rehearing on the issue yesterday. Yesterday. But what this decision makes absolutely clear is that the Maryland General Assembly needs to enact our Drug Cost Commission bill introduced by Delegate Jocelyn Pena Melnick last year, which would do what this bill does and beyond that help protect Marylanders from skyrocketing costs of brand name drugs, which the present bill does not do. This Drug Cost Commission bill will protect Marylanders from the high cost of prescription drugs, which is hurting many, many Marylanders and many, many Americans, keeping them from getting the drugs they so desperately need, making our premiums go higher, and keeping people from being safe and, alive and, and, and healthier because of the prescription drugs they need. The new law has been held up in litigation since it passed last year. Frosch must decide if he wants to bring the issue before the U.S. Supreme Court. The Maryland Department of Health releases a report on drug and alcohol-related deaths in the state. Fentanyl-involved deaths are on the upswing. For the first three months of last year, there were 371 deaths. This year, the number is at 500. Cocaine-related deaths were also up, as were deaths, deaths connected to alcohol use. Heroin over de overdose deaths are down slightly. Here in Prince George's County, for the first three months of this year, deaths in, deaths in those categories is down over the same period last year. Well, the funeral services are set for the Howard County firefighter who died Monday while battling a blaze in Clarksville. The viewing for 34-year-old Nathan Flynn will be held Friday night at 8 p.m. at Mountain Christian Church in Joppa. The funeral will be held on Saturday at 11 a.m. Flynn was fighting this fire at the house fire when he fell through the roof floor and became trapped for more than 20 minutes. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Investigators say a lightning strike may have struck the house. The investigation into that police-involved shooting in Montgomery County continues. It was Monday when Officer Edward Cochran shot and killed 30-year-old John Perez in Fairland. Investigators say Perez entered his ex-girlfriend's house and threatened her. Police say he then barricaded himself inside the apartment with his 3-year-old son. Perez was shot after allegedly setting a house on fire, that unit, I should say. The child was unharmed. The officer was placed on administrative leave, as is routine in cases like this one. Well, it is time to start thinking about school supplies and bus schedules because the new school year is just around the corner. Maryland law requires that all students enrolled in pre-K through 12th grade have up-to-date immunization shots. CTV's Katera Jones is in Upper Marlboro with more on what you need to know. Before students walk inside a classroom this September, they must have their required vaccinations. Now to talk a little bit more about that is Dr. Adrian Talley with the Prince George's County School System. Thank you for having us today. Glad to be here. All right, can you talk a little bit about the required vaccinations? Every student must have their age required uh, immunization as required by state law. And so what we want are all children to be immunized and be compliant as required. And I know you guys also have free clinics coming up. Talk mm -hmm. about that. Luckily, through a partnership with Kaiser Permanente for the week of August the 6th, Kaiser Permanente will be doing immunizations for all of our children if they bring with them their, um, their forms. 
And I know you guys have a lot of success with this in the past. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've been very successful with this. We've gotten better every year in getting children immunized. What we want parents to remember is they need to take their children to their health care provider and get their child immunized. And, you know, if students come to class on that first day in September and they don't have their shots, what happens to them? They will be excluded as required by state law. Right. Remember, parents can go to their health care provider, they can go to the local grocery stores to get their child immunized, and the Department of Health. For more information on the free clinics, visit pgcps.org. Reporting in Upper Marlboro, Katera Jones, CTV News. Thank you, Katera. Again, parents must be with their child to take advantage of the free clinic. If you have questions, contact the Office of School Health at 301 749 Four seven two two. I slowed that down so you could get it. Okay. Well, the Maryland Department of Agriculture will be in Prince George's County tonight spraying for mosquitoes. The recent discovery of mosquitoes infected with West Nile virus prompted the action. Spraying will take place in portions of Riverdale Park, Edmonston, Hydesville, and Rogers Heights in the areas where the mosquitoes were discovered. The Health Department also announced the first human case this year in Maryland. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Byron Scott. And I'm Denise Douglas.